Improvisation in Conversations. Hi, everybody. Guess who I'm sitting here with? Miss Barbara McCullough. Hello. Hi, how how are, you? are you? I'm great. Thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, you also. Miss McCullough is the uh, director. She does so many things, but she's the director of a, a film, a documentary by Har about Horace Tapscott and jazz pianist, just musical genius, mm -hmm. activist, just mm -hmm. an incredible, incredible man. And her film was just shown at the Pan-African Film Festival here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. to a sold out crowd for two nights. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations, oh, well, first so of much. all. The thank film you. is called Horace Tapscott, Musical so Grio. Just what a fabulous uh, title. Tell us a little bit about the film itself and how you got involved. Okay, well, I started this project like years and years ago. I mean, it's, I mean, I always say children were born, grandchildren were born, but uh, I started it way back when, when I was in film school, but I didn't finish it then because I did other projects, but I didn't finish, you know, my horror film. I was really ambitious and I was going to try to do as many as projects as I could. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I had wanted to do is I wanted to do a project called Who Are the New Jazz People? And I tried to go get funding for that. And I wanted to concentrate on Los Angeles, on St. Louis Black, um, Black Artist Group, and also AACM in Chicago. And I got seed money from National Endowment of the Arts to, you know, basically enough to really do some research and what have you, and actually use that money to start the filming, okay? And then additionally, what, what motivated me was um, people had known Horace, mm. and Horace's life was um, sort of loosely um, portrayed in a film called Passing Through by filmmaker named Laura, um, Larry Clark. Okay. And, you know, I didn't even know to what extent Horace was involved in that until I was, saw, uh, was at a film festival in, in Italy and I happened to see the film. Mm. But um, Horace had had an aneurysm. And I know everybody oh. knew Horace, and, and Horace was like this iconic community figure. And he passed away in 99, he correct? He passed away in 1999. Right, but I started the film in the late um, 1970s. Oh, wow. So um, I was kind of wondering, well, how come nobody's ever actually done a documentary on Horace? You know, you know, why hasn't anyone actually done that? And I guess it's because, you know, when you're close to a person sometimes, even though you understand their value, you may not, you know, um, you know, think about necessarily documenting their life because you knew so much about them. Mm -hmm. So I sort of said, okay, fine, well, let me just see. Mm -hmm. Because Horace is, you know, he's very casual, very self-assured, very, mm -hmm. you know, very calm, you know, but very, very committed to the idea of passing on what he had learned to, you know, the, the um, you know, young people because mm -hmm. of the fact he had and made this promise to his mentors that he, if he was given this knowledge, he would pass it on to those, you know, around him. And that's essentially what he did. Mm. And so he was, you know, playing the music of African-American composers, including his own, you know, his own music. Wow. And this is what, you know, basically he, you know, he played. In the process of him, um, you know, being dedicated to performing for the community, a lot of groups um, asked him to, you know, basically play at their rallies, political rallies. Mm. And because of his presence at those rallies, he wound up being, you know, targeted by um, LAPD, probably, and COINTELPRO, you know, mm. like, as he says in the film, the CIA, you know, FBI, and he says, and, Co and all those people, you know. Oh, wow. So he was blacklisted. Yeah, he was blacklisted. And his, his albums, um, you know, kind of like disappeared. His promo albums disappeared from the radio station. I started playing the piano at about six years old. It was a constant thing every day. All my life has been around playing, you know, and listening and learning. And you never get to the end, it seems like. The music was always there. The idea was to teach you the music so the music could preserve itself through the ages. Behind the bombing of those youngsters in the Alabama, Music started changing then with my own orchestra, about 35 people playing at all kinds of rallies that had to do with African American getting rights. Because that's what our, we were formed for, to, to help free our people. 
police made us stop playing at the Watts Coffee House. They broke in in the back door, their shotguns, just <laughs> stop the music. I said, what? And he lined up everybody against the wall. I said, don't play. Oh, he was inciting riots. It never stops. That's what's so exciting about being in the music. And as long as you have the opportunity to put it over the best way that you know how, I mean, it's coming out of you, then it has a cleansing feeling about it as well. Sometimes it don't make you a lot of money, you understand? But it does make for a life that if you had to live again, you'd probably live it the same way. Horace Tapscott, musicalgrio.com. Go to this, that address, and um, learn all that you can about this film. And, and if you're interested in possibly uh, doing a screening, then please uh, reach out to Barbara McCullough mm -hmm. via that site, and uh, she'll talk to you. No, I certainly will. Because, again, you know, I want to, you know, I want to get it around as many places as possible. Um, and I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to screen it twice at the Pan-African Film Festival. On March 9th, uh -huh. okay, um, it'll be screened at the Film Forum at MOCA yes. on the Grand Avenue uh, complex. So that'll be March 9th at 7 o'clock. Thank you so much for, for just coming in and speaking with us at Improvisation in conversations. And thank you very much for spending time with us. We really appreciate it. Take good care. <laughs> Improvisations in conversations.